from WNYT, Albany, in HD. Weekend Today begins right now. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Amy. You're watching Weekend Today. Here's what's making news this morning. The man convicted for the brutal killing of a Troy City official learns his fate. In Washington, D.C., White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer resigns. Find out what his motivation reportedly was for calling it quits. And back at home, the gates open for the 149th season of racing at the Saratoga Racecourse. We'll get to those stories in a moment, but first, let's get a quick check of the weather this morning. Here's meteorologist Neil Astano. Hi, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Well, the horses, the jockeys, the fans, the races are back open once again. Yesterday was opening day at the Saratoga Racecourse, kicking off the 149th racing season. Thousands lined up in the morning outside the gates, ready to enjoy the Spa City's top summer attraction. For many horse racing fans, opening day has become like a holiday. Racegoers enjoyed perfect weather for yesterday's kickoff. Naira says more than 32,000 fans have already made it out to the race course. Opening day at Saratoga Racecourse is also traditionally a big day for local business owners. The flood of racing enthusiasts throughout the season annually provides a financial lift to the Saratoga Springs economy. News Channel 13's Nia Hamm reports. There's a new playground at the racetrack. Kids were out yesterday testing it out, and many racing fans were also testing out ride sharing, ordering Uber and Lyft rides to and from the course. Naira has even installed an Uber pickup zone for more convenience. It's a service that's cutting into the summer boom for Saratoga cab drivers. On Thursday, Naira announced that Uber will be the official ride sharing partner for the meet. New Uber riders can get $15 off their first trip to the race course using the promo code Naira. 2017. In news of the Trump administration, Sean Spicer has resigned as White House press secretary. Spicer is said to have stepped down after strongly objecting to President Trump appointing Anthony Scaramucci as White House communications director. Scaramucci is a Wall Street friend of the president's and a fundraiser. Sarah Huckabee Sanders will take over Spicer's role in her first on-camera briefing. Sanders read a statement about Spicer from the president. Earlier yesterday, Spicer tweeted, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve the president of the United States, end quote. The staff change comes as President Trump's team says it's investigating special counsel Robert Mueller. Mueller is in charge of the investigation into the Trump campaign's relationship with Russia. The White House says Mueller's legal team contributed to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's campaigns. Reports say President Trump is already asking aides about the possibility of pardoning family members and others caught up in the Russian probe. Back here at home, convicted murderer Joseph Vandenberg learned he is headed to prison. Vandenberg received the maximum sentence yesterday of 25 years to life behind bars. Prosecutors say Vandenberg stabbed former Troy City official Bill Chamberlain to death back in December 2015. Investigators found Vandenberg's blood on the murder weapon and the victim's blood on his clothes, helping to seal his conviction. Chamberlain was walking his dog when he was stabbed. Prosecutors were never able to establish a clear motive behind the attack. Waterford police arrested a convicted rapist fresh out of prison for acting suspiciously at Peebles Island State Park. 42-year-old William Goodwin is accused of following a young mother and her two kids along one of the trails yesterday. She told police he approached her, motioned for her to follow him, and said, you love your kids, don't you? That's when the mom screamed for help. Goodman was picked up by police before he left the park. He had been out of prison for less than a month after serving 25 years. He's back behind bars again now, charged with menacing. Troy police identify the man involved in a chase that ended in the Hudson River. Authorities pulled 33-year-old Vernon Cheatham into a boat near Middleburg Street on Thursday night. Police say Cheatham was driving on 9th Street when he hit some cars and a motorcycle. They say he then took off and tried to drive into the Hudson River. When that didn't work, he jumped in. The motorcyclist has serious injuries. A source with knowledge of the case tells us he's a retired Troy police officer. We now know it sparked a blaze in a Saratoga Springs home. Investigators say an electrical issue triggered the fire at the Tamarack Trail residence on Thursday, leading to the death of Susan Lewin. 50-year-old Jason Lewin is in critical condition at Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse. Eight dogs lived in the home. Four of them did not make it out. 
There's a relief effort ongoing for the victims of Monday night's fire on Madison Avenue in Albany. More than a dozen people were left homeless by the blaze. Three row houses had to be demolished. The City of Albany and the Lark Street Business District are coordinating the relief effort. You can donate at any CEFQ branch. There will also be a benefit fundraiser tonight at the Savoy Tap Room on Lark Street. Admission is $10. Well, coming up, a reminder on some changes affecting how people in the capital region dial on their phones. And a little later in health news, a glimpse at the future of surgery rapidly becoming the present.